Welcome to another episode of Public Health Matters with the Uncas Health District. I'm your host, Patrick McCormick, and we have a great episode today. We are going to be speaking to TVCCA about their energy assistance program, and I have uh, Zach St. Jean from St. John, see, the French, uh, who's the energy manager at TVCCA, and Jason Martin, not Martin, <laughs> uh, who is a social services manager at TVCCA. So we're going to learn a lot about energy assistance today, and I just want to thank you both very much for being here with us. Thank you. Um, so we're going to start, uh, the Uncas Health District obviously deals with you folks quite a bit around wintertime. Um, we get a lot of phone calls, mostly from tenants who are experiencing problems with heating in their buildings. Um, occasionally we get homeowners that are just finding it very difficult to be able to, to heat their homes. Um, and fortunately, we've had a, a, a rather warm fall, um, but that doesn't mean we're not going to get slammed in the wintertime. Um, so maybe you could tell me a little bit about what determines a household's eligibility for LIHEAP, and maybe you could tell me what LIHEAP is. Yeah. Uh, so basically what LIHEAP is, that we're the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program. Uh, we're federally funded, and what determines a household's eligibility, it's strictly based on household composition versus income. Okay. So the more household members you have, the higher the income guidelines are. Um, basically, a, a, an applicant will come into our office, we'll take um, all a list of required documentations, including um, bank statements, a rent receipt, or a proof of mortgage, um, a utility bill, and their last uh, four weeks of income. Okay. Uh, from there, we determine eligibility through our uh, computer system, come up with an eligibility award, and, uh, and then that hopefully will get them through the, the winter season. Uh, it's a real, like I said, it's a really good program. We're up to 4,000 applicants already um, this year, so we're already into 40% of our caseload. So, um, we're, so we're taping in the middle of October and you're at 40% of your caseload. Yes, yeah, 40%. Where we always shoot for um, 10,000 households. We've hit 10,000 households in the past, and um, so we just want to really get the word out and, and make people aware of this program. Now, when you take applications for the program, how do people generally find the agency and, and determine how they can fill out that application? Well, uh, we, we do get a, uh, some traffic onto our website, tvcca.org. Okay. Um, we have a lot of clients that have been on the program before. Um, so a lot of returning customers, uh, they've call, they, you know, they can call for an application. We, we do see clients on a, uh, a walk-in basis. Okay. They can come right into our UNCAS office. We're located on uh, 401 West Thames Street okay. in Norwich. Um, they can come right in. May have to wait a little bit because we, we have scheduled appointments, um, but we're very flexible. We have a lot of uh, veteran intake workers. It's about a 20-minute process. and, and they, they could leave that day with their benefit amount, knowing what they're going to be getting for the whole winter season. And which, which region do you all cover as far as who can come to your office and ask for help? So we're uh, New London County only. Okay. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see all the towns of New London County. And if they're not one of your towns, then you're probably going to be able to refer them to somebody else yes. who can't help them. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll definitely refer them. And we've been known to even take that application and fax that application if they fell out of the region okay. to the proper uh, to the proper agency that they would need to. No, we, we also have, have an uh -huh. office located in uh, New London as well on mm -hmm. 83 Huntington Street. <coughs> so you northern tier and southern That's tier right. of yeah, the county. Yep. Yep. Now, what type of heating sources can you provide support for? Is it gas? Is it oil? Is it everything? Yeah, it's basically it is everything. Okay. It's we, we deal with all deliverable fuels, okay. um, and that's oil, kerosene, propane, uh, wood. We've even had some um, wood pellets. Yeah. Um, not a lot, but it, it's getting there. Um, I'm trying to think, I uh, hit all the deliverables, and then uh, we also do the utilities. So if it's electric heated or natural gas, okay. so we'll, we'll help everybody. The, the main difference that I like to tell people is for uh, the deliverable fuels, a household will be eligible for up to up to really five benefits. We ha we determine a basic benefit amount, a crisis benefit amount, and then potentially um, determining how much their uh, uh, their household income is, yeah. could be eligible for what we call safety net uh, funds. Okay. And with that, that could potentially uh, add up to almost $2,400 worth of fuel oh. throughout that whole winter season, which we, uh, we basically say the winter season is November for, well, November 9th this year uh, to March 15th. That's when we can authorize fuel deliveries. Okay. Um, electric and natural gas customers will get one benefit and that's usually paid out around the first of the year, January, um, really from anywhere from January through June. 
Um, and, and the reason they're getting one delivery is uh, what, when they get eligible for, a, for our program, they'll also be um, signed up automatically for the winter moratorium, which runs from November 1st to May 1st. And that's saying that a client or, or a household cannot get shut off during the winter season, okay. as long as they come to us and apply with us and, uh, and we'll let the, all of our vendors know. Now what, um, what generates the, the need do you see? Is it uh, cold season? You kind of figure it's, as it's getting colder, you're going to see more people contacting you. Is it bad economy? Is, it, you know, is there a way you can kind of feel out in October that this is going to be a good year or a bad year, or it's really hard to determine? And there's a lot of different factors. Um, I think cost of oil is a big one. Yeah. Um, the severity of the winter will is you know does um, affect <coughs> how busy we are for energy assistance. I mean, last year we had um, a very mild winter, yes. and um, you know we um, you know subsequently saw you know less clients. We still did very well last year as far as the number of clients served, but we did see less clients when compared to um, more. Uh, typical intense yeah. winters that mm -hmm. we are used to in New England. So. And do your clients generally, if they're accessing services through the heating assistance, they're also utilizing other services with you, or can they be heating assistance only clients? Um, it's a little bit of everything. I mean, I mm -hmm. think um, clients definitely um, access um, various services within our agency, and then we do have a client base that, you know, traditionally utilizes the energy assistance program and then mm -hmm. you know that's it that's you know that's what they need and that's um, the service that we provide mm -hmm. and what's competing with with heating oil or what's competing with you know the the wood stove is it is it you know the, if I pay for the fuel I'm gonna be taking food out of my child's mouth is it um, you know we're gonna be having to give up the car so we can travel on the bus or you know, sure. What are people facing in terms of that crisis that you're speaking of yeah it, it is a lot of uh, it is a lot of that um, you know we, we I, I particularly take a lot of clients' uh, applications done over the phone okay. um, because the fact that they're worried about not having enough gas to get down to our office. Right. Um, I mean, that's like the, reala the reality of it. Um, that we, we and, and it is the food, <laughs> the food well, situation. We, I mean, we've had, you know, I'm sure you've had similar where um, people will call us and halfway through their call, the phone shuts down and you realize yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they're putting money down so they can make the call so they can yeah. get the help. I'm yeah. sure same for you all. Yeah, we, we see a lot of, you know, it, determining on the bus schedule, that's when they have to have their their uh, application scheduled for. Um, but yeah, it, it is, it, it's scary out there and that's why we've, we just kind of made the decision, you know, we're going to see anybody, you know, on, the wa on a walk-in basis. Um, of course, we like to, we, we're going to schedule a lot of clients, right. um, but we're not going to turn anybody away. On wh whenever they come into our office, we're going to get them a service that they need. Um, and if it's something that I can't help them with, with the energy assistance, mm -hmm. I can refer them to, mm -hmm. to Jason's staff with uh, case <coughs> management and, and point them in the right direction. So if you go to the hospital, you go to the emergency room, they'll never turn you away. <laughs> and if you're looking for social services and you go to TVCCA, <laughs> they'll never turn you away. So that's, that's, right. a, yeah. that's a good thing for yeah. people to yeah. hear. Yeah, absolutely. You have a case management program. Yes. Um, what types of services do you offer through case management at TVCCA? Um, we really offer a full array of different uh, services. Um, we take what's called the no wrong door approach at TVCCA, mm -hmm. um, where if you know, regardless of the the program or service they're accessing through TVCCA, it's our goal to help them have access to all the services that they're eligible in the community. Mm. So we take a look at the various programs within our agency that they might be eligible for, including energy assistance, uh, including the WIC program, our child development programs, uh, housing, our housing department and the services they have to offer. We'll also um, assess and take a look at their eligibility for um, uh, state benefits services through Department of Social mm -hmm. Services, and that's uh, SNAP benefits, uh, cash assistance, uh, medical. Um, and then uh, we continue and look at uh, the basic needs services that are available in the community, whether it's food pantry referrals, clothing referrals, um, assistance with transportation if services are available. And, um, you know, we do a lot of work with uh, goal development with clients, mm -hmm. um, working with them on employment goals if they're looking for employment, um, helping them access uh, adult education if they're looking to further their education goals, and, um, you know, pr also providing additional financial um, counseling. We have a uh, financial literacy coordinator who will sit down and uh, who also runs a uh, volunteer income tax assistance program. Mm -hmm and uh, provides a lot of uh, kind of higher level assistance with um, 
you know, financial concerns that they might be facing, whether it's credit management or um, household budgeting or, you know, issues with, uh, you know, various financial matters. And I think the one misconception <coughs> I hear in the community is that uh, the folks that are in these programs, you know, they're, they're sort of happy to be in the program. Um, they feel no need to, to go and do something different because all these services are provided to them. And, and if they're, you know, sitting in a home and they're getting all these things helping them, mm -hmm. why would they ever be motivated to do anything different? And, you know, I think in the discussion we have and obviously what we see in the field, that's not the case. Right, that's uh, maybe right. you can speak a little bit to the, you know, when you talk about the job programs and all these different programs that you have that really motivate people to go out and, sure. and to better themselves. And sure. it, your clients, I think in general, feel that way that, yep. you know, this isn't necessarily where they want to be. Um, yep. They're always, you know, they're coming to you for help. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that misconception is, is that, you know, they want to be where they are where sometimes the reality is um, they're kind of stuck where they are. Right. You know, if, um, you know, they're looking for a job and they can only find something that provides really minimal income, then they're actually at a loss. They may be working and bringing in income, but now they've lost certain benefits through, you know, SNAP benefits or cash assistance where they're actually making less income now. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they're, you know, struggling with that reality. Um, you know, a, a lot of our um, clients or, or participants come in and they are looking to kind of better their situations and, and looking for that right opportunity for, you know, um, improving their uh, situation with employment, um, you know, improving their financial situations um, so that they can, you know, make that next step forward. Um, so, so you mentioned about the eligibility requirements for heating assistance. Mm -hmm. I assume there's eligibility requirements for um, getting the case management piece as well? Uh, as far as it matters for the client, there's really not uh, income eligibility for them to come and sit down and, and, and meet with a, with a case manager. Okay. Uh, we have uh, various income eligibility that we need to, you know, administer so that we're counting clients in certain programs and, and you know, counting them on, under, you know, certain contracts. But as far as clients coming in, if they have an issue and they need to speak with a case manager, they don't really have to worry about income eligibility. Uh, income eligibility may become more of a factor when they start applying for other various programs and, and they may or may not be eligible for, for those particular services, mm -hmm. but we'll take a look mm -hmm. at that um, when they come in, you know, and, um, you know, there's a lot of things sometimes that we can do regardless of their income eligibility. Now, we cover nine towns in the region. You all cover the entire county. That's right. Um, and one of the things that we obviously see a lot is the variation between that urban area versus sure. the rural area. Um, the needs of somebody who has potentially more transportation access like yeah. you do in Norwich versus somebody who's out in Bosra or out mm -hmm. in Sprague who just can't get access to a, a trip to the doctor or a trip to, to services. Mm -hmm. um, how does that person who may be out in the rural area um, get access to the same services that they would if they're in that urban area? Is it, is it tougher because they're, they're kind of further out, people don't know they're there? Are they more uh, um, uh, home poor? out in that area where maybe they own their house but they can't afford to live there? What, what is the difference between it's, those two? It's definitely tougher, I think, for them to access our services. Um, you know, we do our best, I think, through energy assistance um, and case management to try to make ourselves as accessible as possible. Yep. Um, but, um, you know, the, the lack of transportation um, from more rural towns um, to our main offices, you know, if they don't have that link and they don't have their own transportation, it's definitely uh, more of a difficulty, um, you know, coming to where we are centrally located. Right. Um, and, um, you know, I think with energy, the rural, um, the rural, you know, households are more mm -hmm. uh, deliverable fuel focus, is that? Yeah, I, I would say, yeah. yeah. And, and um, you know, there's um, hardships, you know, regarding that. Um, well, one of the things I think I've seen with TVCCA uh, clients is they access a lot of the um, town uh, staff, which then put them in yes. connection. So, you know, I've, yeah. I think it's been the senior uh, services director, uh, yep. maybe the community center director in Sprague has, has utilized TVCCA. Yep. Yep. The Definitely. first selectman's office always knows about TVCCA. Mm -hmm. yep. So, you know, is that where maybe they could go if they can't oh, get yeah. to you? Yeah. Yeah, well, I was just about to say we have a lot of town volunteers. Um, I want to say, I think we have about 15 volunteers in, in different towns um, taking applications for us. On top of that, what we try to do is before the season, um, which is, we, we start taking applications August 1st. Okay. Uh, this year, some, some years it's September, but 
most of the time it's August 1st. Okay. Um, we'll actually go right out to a lot of our elderly housing centers too, yeah. and, uh, and we'll take applications there, uh, get them, bring them back to our office, the applications, and, and enter them in, just so they're, they're comfortable with everything. They're, we'll go right out to them. But um, yeah, a, a lot of it is our, our town volunteers, and we can't thank them enough, because oh. they, they see a lot, of, a lot of clients and customers for us, so um, especially during the, uh, d during the November time when we're constantly ordering oil, so. And what, what pays for the fuel that they're getting? Is it, is it grant money? Is it donations? Is it a combination? Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a grant money. Um, and on top of that, too, I, I, what I wanted to comment on was we have a lot of other um, programs that we could get people eligible okay. for. So um, speaking on some of our vendors, they have other programs that customers might not be aware of right. that they'll come in to see us. Maybe they're not eligible for us for whatever reason if they're missing documentation or if they fall just over our guideline. Right. We can take an application for them for a different program yep. um, and get them eligible for, for, for that. Yep. Um, a lot of our electric customers, where we can, we work directly with the vendor mm -hmm. to uh, to get a, uh, you know, it could be a, a payment down, get them on a budget plan. Right. Um, that's a lot of things that they're going to find out just talking with our intake workers. So they may be coming in with a, uh, coming in to see us, not maybe not expecting to get help that day. Yeah. Um, but they may be leaving with a with a pretty good uh, budget plan in hand and and other resources available. So when you um, talk about how comprehensive TVCCA is, I can say we've been to homes where um, we'll be there on an energy assistance issue, and then we're seeing Meals on Wheels deliver a meal to somebody, or we go to talk to the mother and she's mm -hmm. saying, "Well, I have to drop my kid off at Head Start," yeah. or you know, breastfeeding and different programs yeah. that you know coming into the community, I had no idea that that TVCCA provided. And yet, it seems like there's so many touch points within the community. The TBCCA is there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the questions I had is, you know, you, you see the clients, and they seem to make their way through the community. Mm -hmm. um, how do you keep that continuity with all of those different programs? Because you know, we've talked about you know DSS, and we've talked mm -hmm. about public health, and we've talked about community-based, and um, how does everybody kind of keep that continuity so the person isn't going from place to place to place to get services? Well, I, I, I can say on, uh, on Energy's behalf, I work a lot with, um, you know, communicating a lot with our, with our Head Start program just through email, um, you know, that so-and-so needs an application done, can you, can you help us with that? Um, you know, th it's really done a lot right, right over the phone. If I need something, I know I can just call Jay mm -hmm. in, uh, right, right in his new London office for, for case management services. Yep. Um, you know, we have our, uh, our housing department is located right, in, right at Uncas. Our WIC department is right on the same floor as us, so yeah. you know, we're constantly communicating quite a bit. If somebody needs an energy appointment and they're currently seeing a, uh, a WIC nutritionist, mm -hmm. they'll walk them right down to, to me or our reception area, yeah. they'll make an appointment, or they'll just be seen right then. Um, so I think it, it's a lot, it's, the communication is really, really great within our, yeah, within I would, our department. And I, I would agree. Agency. I think communication really is the key to that and mm -hmm. making sure that if a case manager knows a uh, client is working with a number of different programs that mm -hmm. we make those connections and ensure that everybody's mm -hmm. you know providing you know the services that everything's kind of aligned and working together yeah. um, so definitely communication is yeah. is essential when when there's a lot of different programs and services involved with one mm -hmm. um, one household now are you finding that uh, you know obviously like I said we deal with tenants quite a bit are you finding that um, tenants are being um, uh, required to provide that fuel at apartments and homes or is it generally the landlord's responsibility um, is the fear that if they don't provide fuel um, that they're going to be evicted or you know what are you facing in terms of you know tenants dealing with their landlords on the we, heating issue we do we see we I should I should mention too we, we do have a uh, um, specific funds available for uh, for customers that have their heat included in their rent okay um, so that, that's we do see some of that, not a lot. Okay. I, I would say maybe um, there may be 150 or so households, you know, at any given year that they, the heat's just included and, and they'll receive, you know, a different a different um, voucher, basically. Okay. Um, as far as landlord, yeah, you know, a lot of it is the tenants are responsible for that, yep. for their own heat. Absolutely. Um, and, and yeah, it, it's a lot of them. They, you know, they're coming in to they're coming in to see us in August. Um, like I said, August 1st is right when we start seeing customers, and in August, they may be out of oil already. <laughs> you know, they, they may have, uh, you know, utilized their funds from last year um, and just had got, you know, gotten a, gotten a late delivery mm -hmm. and have no fund, and 
they're coming into us on an emergency situation. So what, what we do in that case, now when we can't do much until November 1st mm -hmm. is, um, or November 9th, excuse me, uh, we'll put them on our emergency list. And as soon as that day comes, they're going to be one of the first to get a delivery. Okay. Um, and, and like I said, there are other programs that we may be able to help them with, you know, to try to supplement their income. You know, we may be able to help them with the electricity, um, you know, in order for them to help pay, the, pay their oil bill, uh, you know, during that time. Now, I imagine that the, uh, the quality of the place they're staying is, is a big part of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's great to have the oil, but if your furnace doesn't work, then it doesn't help. Um, yep. It's great to have the heat, but yep. if you have, you know, wind blowing through your house, that doesn't help a lot. Yeah, um, so, you know, does, does TVCCA look at that part when you're delivering the oil, or is it just the oil goes in, and if it's capable of being delivered, great, and if yeah. not, then, you know, tough? Yeah, um, basically what we look at, well, what the, what the, uh, the oil companies and the vendors are, are looking at is they can't deliver to, to a household if the, uh, if the furnace is red tagged, which means it's just unusable. They can't, they can't use it. They'll let us know that. Okay. Um, and then from there, we've actually, we were lucky last year and this year, we received some funds for uh, furnace repair and replacements. Okay. So that's another application done r right at our UNCAS office. Um, and we can potentially get a household a brand new furnace. Great. Um, so, uh, so that's a that, that's a so totally another uh, yeah. application. But I mean, it's we're lucky enough that there fu there was funding, and there still is funding for this year. So, and like we tell people, you know, we can't guarantee they're going to be able to help you with yeah. that. Yeah. However, yeah. it's worth asking because there's always that possibility. Yeah, yep. Yep. And, yep. We, and we will refer um, households to um, the entities that provide um, weatherization Absolutely. services in this area. So hopefully that um, when going through the, you know, home, yeah. you know, they'll, they'll help and analyze, you know, where the uh, gaps are that need to be sealed and identify, you know, where, you know, insulation needs to go and, and really kind of um, help both on the, um, you know, kind of weatherization aspect of it as well as the um, utility um, efficiency mm -hmm. of, of the household as well. Okay. So now can you remind me of the phone number they need to call because I always get nervous that I'm going to forget to ask <laughs> and then it's never going to go up on the screen. Yep, yep. So I'm, I'll give you the direct line to call to schedule an appointment. Okay. It's 860-425-6681 and that's okay. a direct line. It's You may not get somebody right on the phone but we'll be calling everybody back. We have we, we actually have quite a bit of staff taking, taking calls off, rescheduling appointments mm -hmm. and uh, you know, making sure they're coming in and, and utilizing the service. And you can deal with uh, uh, clients that speak a different language, yes. correct? You have yep. those yep. resources oh, yeah. as well. Yep, yep, yep. So definitely. That's not a that's not a concern at all. And if you're uh, you know you have a client and you need to access those services, can somebody call on behalf of a client that they may have, or on behalf of a family member who may not be able to call themselves? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've had I, I've dealt with uh, with clients that you know that they rather have you know somebody else call yeah. um, to sign an application. We would need somebody, you know, that the power of attorney documentation okay. to actually physically sign the uh, the application for them. Okay. Um, but yeah, yeah, no, feel I, I would it say works that it. totally mm -hmm. fine. Yep. Okay. So now the agency also manages this volunteer income tax assistance program. Um, tell me a little bit more about it while we sure. still have a little time here on the show. Yeah. Um, so the, um, the VITA program, for short, mm -hmm. um, is. Um, Really a great program that we've been running probably for about 10 years now. Okay. And it's, it's a program that continues to grow. Um, and um, it's as much of a volunteer opportunity for people in the community who want to volunteer um, as much as it is a free income tax uh, assistance program for households um, I, that fall under the income of, I believe, $53,000 now. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's a wide range of, of people, really, that are eligible for this program. Uh, last year we served about 900, um, uh, we did about 900 yeah, taxes, yeah, 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 so, and uh, we have uh, volunteer sites in our Norwich, off, uh, in, our Nor in the Norwich area, New London, and um, in Pocktuck at the Pocktuck Neighborhood Center. Now tell me about the volunteers, who are these folks that, that volunteer their time? Well, uh, they really are an amazing group, I will say that. Um, and the majority of our volunteers have been people that have been with doing this for, you know, two, three, five, you know, years, all the way from the beginning when we started. Mm -hmm. um, it's everybody from employees of the agency. Um, we've had um, lawyers. We've had accountants, uh, CPAs. We have just, um, just a wide range of different people who... 
uh, really enjoy doing this, which is kind of crazy, but it's, um, I kind of enjoy it myself. It's uh, really a unique um, service and uh, uh, you know, we have a great group and we have a lot of fun doing it. So, so if you volunteer for this program, are you getting some basic training before you start or are you going in, you know, just taking, taking somebody's paperwork and starting to fill it out for them or how does that work? No, absolutely no. We, uh, we, are, um, we have to go through what I feel is a rather rigorous training process, mm -hmm. certification process okay. um, through the IRS. Um, so we have to um, be, be um, certified as a tax preparer um, to be able to, to provide this service. So I assume that personally to be able to go through that program, you're gaining knowledge you otherwise wouldn't. So even if you're you know, uh, uh, nervous about, you know, as soon as you hear IRS, I, I immediately start to <laughs> you know, yeah. get a little yeah. nervous myself. Sure. Um, but it sounds like something where just personally it's probably good information to have as you're preparing your own taxes. Correct? Absolutely. I've learned so much and I've become so much more confident just doing my own taxes. Yeah. Where before I was just kind of doing the, you know, um, just kind of doing the interview process and hoping that everything came out right. I really kind of understand the tax law now and how everything applies to, you know, the, the numbers that you're, you're you know, putting into the, putting into the system. Mm -hmm. And I should say that people can volunteer for the VITA program and not prepare taxes. Okay. You know, we have greeters, screeners who will sit down and kind of just go through all the documents, make sure people um, have the information that they need. Um, so there are a lot of different uh, volunteer opportunities if somebody's really not ready to, you know, jump into the tax preparation realm, which I could completely understand. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah. So uh, we have about three minutes left. Sure. And I always try to ask, what is it about your job, you can kind of take turns, yep. um, that really brings you joy each day? Do you, do you, you know, this isn't the type of job generally where, mm -hmm. um, you know, you get that financial benefit, mm -hmm. um, you know, somebody pats you on the back each day and says, what a great job you're doing. So where do you get that joy out of the work that you're doing? Just seeing our customers coming in, and, and I can hear them all the way down our hall. They're talking with our intake workers, and we're getting them that service. A lot, of, Like I said, a lot of people aren't aware of you know, how much of a benefit they're going to get. We're seeing a lot of people come in in, in a crisis situation, and when, whenever you're able to, to help them and you can hear them you know, just express their gratitude, it's, I mean, it's, it's awesome. I get, you know, we, we constantly get, you know, thank you notes and uh, you know voicemails. I try to save all of those <laughs> that right. I can, but uh -huh. no, it, it's, it's just a great feeling. I know that's kind of a... Uh, no, I think that's great, important. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's, that's really what it is. It's, yeah. it's helping people and seeing the positive outcome. Yeah. Well, and, and I know Deb Monaghan very well, the Executive Director nice. of TVCCA, and, yeah. and you know, I'm sure she'll have this on tape, so you can <laughs> never leave. So everybody can she'll say, oh, you have your job, you can't go anywhere. Yeah. Um, but you know, it is critical for people to see the same folks all the time. Um, and I think that's one thing I've seen with TVCCA is people tend to stay in the job. Yeah. Um, it's a difficult job. I give you all a lot of credit for what you do. Um, dealing with the public and very often dealing with the same people that are struggling on a regular basis. Um, so I give you all a lot of credit. Um, I want to thank you all very much for coming on the show today. Okay. Thank um, you. Could you give the phone number one more time so we can have sure. people uh, could give you a call? Yeah, for help? yeah definitely. Uh, the number is 860-425-6681. Very good. So this is TVCCA Energy Assistance Case Management and Vita. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much for being on the show today. I can't thank you enough. Thank you. And we'll thank see you. you on the next episode of Public Health Matters with the Uncas Health District.